Welcome back for another video. It's Ahabad and we are in Raid Shadow Legend. Cursed City, Amius, or the Anus, depending on <laughs> who's who's reading it. Uh, um, yeah, so obviously in the, the last video, I showed my first attempts at it and I, I obviously got it horribly wrong in that video. Um, but I wanted to show what a the team I used, but actually that's less important. But really, I wanted to talk about the fight management and the biggest pitfall that I found. And I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole video if you just want to know the the tidbit. Uh, and that is this mastery, cycle of magic. This is the mastery that's most likely to cause you problems in the fight. And this is where fight management becomes very problematic. And that's actually what was throwing me off repeatedly uh, when I first tried the fight. I think I would have probably beaten it first time had it not been for that mastery, at least within the first uh, few tries. Um, and then there's a few other points in terms of actually managing the fight. We'll go in and actually do a run quickly. Not the whole run because it's a little bit slow in, in my composition anyway. I could probably speed it up now that I have a better understanding of the fight, but I wanted to talk through it. Um, in the first form, essentially, there's a couple of things. The A2 is the main heal, so you want to have heal reduction before he uses the A2. The A3 is when it will convert the decreased attack into increased attack. Ideally, you would have a champion that can then steal the increased attack thereafter. Uh, that is kind of quite important. I do think it really helps a lot to have decreased attack on the boss at all times uh just being cognizant of the fact that this this um this a3 is gonna make it into an increased attack that said from the second cycle onwards our expectation particularly because we'll have decreased attack on the boss is he'll go a3 a2 a1 uh, and then change form and if we set it up properly he will A3, A2, A1 again. Now there's a couple of things on how to ensure that setup, and we'll talk through it on the fight. But that's those are kind of the fundamentals. Um, another thing, after he's done the A2 here, uh, in the second form, we want to ensure that we have things such as strengthen up. That is when we could, in theory, use ally protection, because this abyssal construct is a real problem. That's the only time you're going to have issues in the fight and this is essentially if this a1 kills someone it resets uh the a3 you get put to sleep again he'll then kill someone with the a1 put you to sleep kill back, uh, back and forth etc so in the end i had venomage for heal reduction and we only need it once per effectively two cycles so you only need it once every like what six turns of the boss so you really don't need um heal reduction on all the time the rest of the healing is is very minor um and therefore you know the most important things in my opinion is having a hundred percent chance to land or a very high probability of landing it and make sure that you get it on uh, at that point because he'll only go from a3 to a2 you actually only have a one turn window, so it's really important that you get it on there. Obviously, if he's done the A3 uh, to flip the existing heal reduction into continuous heal, you need to reapply it. So having it a hundred percent chance or or near enough is actually kind of important, I think. Then I found strengthen was extremely valuable at being able to survive the A3. So Mithral is super strong there. Having two cleansers is pretty, pretty good uh, overall, but you only truly need to cleanse once every cycle again. <laughs> and then obviously you want to have some form of healing sustained to keep yourself topped up throughout the, the rest of the time. Now, as I mentioned, when he switches form, we want to ensure that he uses the A3 first, which means we need some buffs, but I would avoid having increased defense. And I'd avoid, ha avoid having strengthen up because those will be flipped. Uh, if we go back to the, the skills, in fact, and we go to the A3. So if we have strengthen and 
increase defense, we will get decreased defense and weaken and take a lot more damage. We're going to get put to sleep no matter what, unless you're running mythicals. Uh, there's no way of resisting it or blocking it. It's it's going to happen. Um, and we don't really want to have decreased defense or weaken on us at that point. But we do need buffs to ensure that he will use the A3. Now, I'm perfectly happy having block debuffs up or increase speed, shield. Any of these kind of abilities are fine. We're not going to get a penalty. Uh, not really, anyway. The block buffs is is not perfect, but that's why we've got cleansers. <laughs> so, you know, it's important that we we have some um some buffs that we he forces the A3, but not so many buffs that we then get really badly hurt uh, by the A2, which um, will, you know, inc it has this, this mechanic that interacts with the number of debuffs that are on us. So the more debuffs that we have, the more uh, turn meter uh, gets pushed back and it becomes problematic. And we also take a lot more damage if uh, we have decreased defense and weaken out there. So we do want to bring some buffs, but <laughs> we need to manage them uh, accordingly. But I, I generally found that block debuffs and increased speed are fairly safe. So Elva and Pythian are that fi uh, fine in that regard. I wasn't really using Mithralis A2 at all because I was using poison for damage. I didn't need the increased attack uh, in that regard. Uh, and a d the increased defense was more of a, a risk. I mean, we could use it at a certain point in time, uh, obviously, if we're not at, at a risk of having that that flippage happening. But I was prioritizing Mithral as A1 to put poisons out instead. I ended up using Uko because of the decrease attack on the A1. But the problem I had with my five uh, members here is they all have Cycle Magic. <laughs> Basically, every champion I, I own who I'd want to use in this fight has Cycle Magic. Um, I think with ally protection, the only time you really want to use it is when you're going to go up against the A1 in the second form. So let's just jump in and we can kind of talk through. If you wanted Amius to open with the A3 on the first cycle, you really need to apply decrease attack and decrease defense. I've found generally if I only do one debuff that's kind of an attractive debuff i one that he can flip into increase attack or or increase defense or heal reduction he ne he needs multiple uh debuffs to to be lured in now we're going to make sure that he's got those debuffs that he wants to flip when he's moving from form 2 back to form 1 so in the first round it doesn't matter we don't need to ensure that he goes with the A3 into the A2. Both of these will be off of cooldown by the time he comes back to this form because of how long he'll stay in the other form. So we can get into the rhythm from the next cycle and it doesn't matter right now. So you're perfectly fine to open just A1 with Mithrala. We want to save the strengthen and we don't want increased defense. Now, what I did with Pythian and Elva is I had them uh, offset. So I had one doing block debuffs first turn and then another one doing block debuffs next turn. So I basically had 100% uptime on, on block debuffs. We do have on the A3 this stun. So we do want to block that essentially. Uh, that one is blockable or resistible. Um, and then I generally saved the A2. <clears throat> Sorry, I saved the A2 from Uko when he had buffs, so I didn't use it otherwise. Here I'd save the A3. We're not going to use it. This this cycle is ready at ready at full HP, so it really doesn't matter. And I would only use this decreased defense, decrease attack when uh after he's used the A3. So we'll just A1. So I'll open A2 because we had no no debuffs out that were attractive. Uh it it just wasn't there wasn't anything to lure him in, but it's fine. So I'm just going to A1, and now I'll use my increased speed uh, from from Elva. At this point, I could use the A2, but I'm just going to A1 again. 
I want to get closer to the time that he's going to switch form and then just make sure we've got the decrease attack out. Between Venomage and Uko, we should have a very high chance of doing that. Um, and I'll just A1, try and get a bit of damage, basically. As long as I've got some buffs up, that's the most important thing. So I'm going to reapply my buff with Pythian, make sure that I remain reasonably attractive. When he does switch form, and now we'll just do this just to uh, make sure that we have, like I said, we want to make sure we have buffs out. So he has something to be drawn in to doing the A3. So he'll do the A3, he'll strip them, put us to sleep. He will follow up with the A2. And then at this point, I'm still going to A1 with Venomage, but now I'm going to put the strength and up for Mithrala. Because now with strength and up and decrease attack, I should be fine with the A1. Other possibilities we could do would be to have someone with ally protection at that point, which would then help uh, whoever the target is. I believe the target will be determined by the lowest HP. That's typically how targeting works. So you could run like a six star awakened champion with the lowest HP to try and really draw uh, that attack to someone that's going to have natural damage mitigation in that regard. All things to consider. At this point, again, he's going to now switch back to the other form because the Eclipse buff is now uh, on its last turn. So he's going to go back to the other um, form and switch any decrease uh, attack and decrease defense and, uh, and heal reduction into continuous heal, increase attack and increase defense. So I'll keep going A1 with Mithrala. I'll keep using my block debuffs when I have them. A1 on Uko and A1 on everyone else, basically. And we'll get him to switch back. We flip them around. Now at this point is the only time that I could use the A2 uh, on Mithrala. It's safe that I can use it, but again, there's just no reason to. I'd rather get the damage from poison. Now with Uko, I can go in and take away his uh, block, his increase attack rather. And then with Venomage, I need to get the heal reduction on in time for the A2. And that is the entire fight in a nutshell. It's about managing the turn order of the boss, ensuring we have decrease attack on as much as possible, ensuring we have either strengthen, Pythian, damage reduction, ally protection, or a high awakened champion who's going to be targeted by the boss's A1, ensuring we have heal reduction up when he does the A2 in the first form, and then otherwise we're kind of just doing damage. So he's going to flip back, we've got enough buffs up, we'll do the A3 into A2, we'll then get Mithrala Cleanse to get the strength and out. We'll just keep using our abilities. We do want the decrease attack. We didn't get it. And obviously we take a lot more damage. Now, you haven't seen it this time, <laughs> but it's uh, I have the cycle of magic on all five champions. So there were loads of times where I was just going along and in this form and he would just suddenly a1 me for no reason and that was there you go he just suddenly did an a1 in the middle of my my turn i'm sure i'm sure that's to do a cycle of magic it's hard to tell because i didn't see any text or any proc to suggest that it was but you can see it ruins the whole fight like you just get wrecked puts you to sleep you miss the turn and now he's healed, we're out of sync, we've, we've lost the fight, basically, as a result of that. And I'm pretty sure that is down to Cyclomagic. Magic. It's the only explanation I can have, because if we go back to the boss guide, and we look in the second form... Whenever an enemy's cooldown is decreased with an artifact, accessory, mastery, or skill, it instantly activates. Now, Elva was the one who activated it. I don't have a refresh accessory. I do have a blood shield, but that doesn't do anything for skills, for skill cooldowns. In terms of 
her actual um, active abilities, nothing's reducing the cooldown. So the only thing that is reducing the cooldown of a skill is Cyclone Magic. So there you go. <laughs> Um, I thought Cyclone Magic would happen at the beginning of the turn, but it seems to be that you take your turn, or you try and click your ability, and then the boss cuts in. It might just be the sequencing in terms of the coding, um, but there's no other explanation, basically. It has to be Cyclone Magic. And as you can see, I have Cyclone Magic on every single one of these champions, which is ultimately why I was finding it so hard <laughs> to, to manage that fight. But yeah, I really just wanted to show this video uh, and go through kind of in detail all of the boss's skills, what you want to be bringing. So, you know, when we get the next rotation, we know when, when the boss is going along, we need the heal reduction to stop the A2 in, in the first form. We need some kind of strengthen, passive reduction, guardian set, ally protection. We need something to stop the A1 in the second form. We need to avoid any skill reduction, so no reflex set, not the new fancy uh, merciless set. None of that. <laughs> we can't be reducing cooldowns in the second form, otherwise we'll trigger that A1 randomly and it causes huge problems. We could probably go for an HP tuned approach with a six star awakened champion because then we'll get 50 percent um ignore defense reduced so instead of ignoring 100 percent defense it will only ignore 50 percent, which means a, a big difference in terms of keeping keeping a champion alive like that's a big big difference uh, and obviously things like increased defense at that point would be more valuable but yeah that's that's kind of that's kind of it in terms of doing damage to the boss poison's the most reliable uh, unless you've got like absolutely crazy, <laughs> crazy comps like this. And even Saf, look there, number three in the world. What a team. <laughs> but I think if you want to do this kind of uh, run, you've got to have someone with six star crushing rend and uh, two ally attackers, or in this case, just one ally attacker, but even more damage. Um, unfortunately, not an option for me. Unless I did something crazy. I don't know. I don't think it's an option. I mean, I do have two fat man, but I don't have a long beard. I don't think I could do the, the damage required. I'm pretty sure I can't. But uh, I also, I would like to do a more accessible comp. I mean, Mithrala, obviously everyone has, but given that I know what else is required at this point, could I, could I switch things around? I do wonder with the A1, could you use taunt to ensure the A1 is directed uh, to someone with like really high HP, such as Emic? That will also help you to know that if you do have an ally protection champion alongside, that it won't be the ally protection champion who's targeted. Like that's not a bad idea. But then you you want to avoid using this A2 whilst he's in the second form. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> you know, then then you're gonna get attacked again, right? Um, protection sets do help because they, they stop the boss stripping some of those buffs. And uh, I think that's, that's kind of it. I hope this has been helpful enough. Um, I might just jump over and find the video of me actually killing the boss, just so you can see the final few minutes, <laughs> just for the fun of it. Right, so I have located it. And actually, I'm pretty sure if we look here, right towards the end of the boss being um, killed, I actually had a, a little bit of an unlucky incident where I did proc the, the boss's A1 randomly. Yep, there you go. You see, I used the ability, proc'd it, almost lost Elva there as well. And it's like, oh. <laughs> This is the problem with running Cycle of Magic. But yeah, like I, I did eventually manage to. I think Elva actually goes down at some point as well. There you go. We're back into the, the last cycle. And you also need to make sure you don't kill him in the second phase as well. You want to kill him in this, 
in this form, because if he's got the Eclipse uh, buff up, he will revive. So you want to kill him in the first form as well. A little extra tidbit. Unfortunately, all the pieces were trash. <laughs> but uh, better luck next month. <laughs> That's just the way it goes, right? One last thing that I wanted to show you, and I think it will be the next video, is I beat Sand Devil and I used uh, a long forgotten champion, a five star level 50, Drockle the Gaunt, making the difference. Now, technically, you can do a duo Pythian and a Burner, but you have to have Pythian built in a certain way. I wanted to do it using the Pythian I have built for Tag Team Arena, so 6p stone skin, uh, 90k HP. This build isn't enough to do the duo. If you do want to do the duo, you need a lot more HP, uh, definitely north of 100k, I think a little bit more potentially. I uh, don't know the exact limit, but I definitely was dying <laughs> when I tried to solo it with this. I needed the support of extra champions. Anyway, I will do another standalone video on this stage. And please let me know in the comments, are there any other specific stages that you would like uh, a in-depth guide or ideas or, or my thought process in doing them? I've still got five more keys today. I'm finding, yeah, Soul Cross is actually really hard. <laughs> like Secret Room 3, I can't do this until I book out my Fushan and Brachus uh, unbooked, and then I don't have any other six stars. I did try to three man it, it, it didn't work. <laughs> and then uh, I don't think, I think I can probably do this stage, although maybe not. I actually need to rank up Broodlord with that 50% chance to stun AoE could be coming in pretty nice here. But yeah, like they're they're all tough. All these rooms are tough. But I I think I can now do painted uh Fyro with the Creedon we got yesterday. It's gonna be key for that. But yeah, they're they're all tough. And uh, another one I actually I did today was this. Awaken stage, we need 20 awakening levels. It's a lot. Fortunately, I had three six stars. But otherwise, I'd have struggled, to be honest. Um, you know, I don't know about these other awakening ones. And again, we need a lot of awakening levels. That's 11. I can reuse some of these with 17. I will manage to just about scrape through then. Uh, but yeah, like if you watch this, that's only 18. Actually, I need. I need more. We then probably end up having to do something like that, but with some some changes somewhere. But you know what I mean. It's like twenty uh, awakening is actually quite a lot. And here I don't have any of my six stars. I've got a couple of epics here. At least I can use Seer in all of these rooms because one of the few champions that I've gone out and bought every single level. But yeah, definitely a lot more. Uh, diversity of roster required and I will be working hard to rank up uh, some more champions and I'm going to be using a lot more books it looks like as I need a much bigger roster built than I, I have previously bothered with. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. For those who stayed to the end, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Please do comment like and subscribe. I've changed the order this time and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.